Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch and welcome to another collector's interview. Today we are in Zurich with my good friend Garrett at Worthington. Nice to see you, man. How have you been? I've been busy, my friend, but uh, I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Wow, guck dir mal hier an. Sein Wrist Game und seine Ringe. Oi, oi, oi. To be able to you know, show these beautiful watches to my audience. Again, this channel is known to feature watches that nobody knows. And again, you're one of those guys who collects watches that we even never featured before. So before we jump into the watches, tell us something about these books, because for those who don't know, you actually... Er, er, schreibt, er schreibt Bücher über Uhren. Wrote all of these books and more. Uh, yeah, so uh, I have a day job, but outside of my day job, uh, I'm an author. Yeah. And so, uh, okay. I generally write in the... Ich habe gerade gedacht, das sind Uhrenbücher. Da wisst ihr, was passiert wäre, ne? Da müsste ich jetzt auch wieder auspacken, ne? I would say the hard sci-fi area. So really thinking about science. Think Michael Crichton, you know, like what could what could happen uh, in the real world if you push that science just a little bit further. Yeah. Um, you know, a good example of these two are kind of scary. I wrote these with my friend Stu Jones. Johnny Depp hat sich ganz schön verändert. Johnny Depp ist ein bisschen anders geworden, ja. And uh, we published these in 2018, and it's about a pandemic that basically wrecks the world that people ignore it because of a war. Yeah. So right now, Stu and I are a little bit concerned. It's, about it's kind of relevant. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so maybe if you do read these books, uh, my, one might foresee the future. Who knows? Yeah, yeah basically, yeah. <laughs> so let's start with the watch on your wrist, because it's very special and not your uh, typical Rolex. What is it? Yeah, so this is a, a Rolex Deep Sea, a James Cameron edition. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not a, a Rolex fanboy, but I'd love Love this watch. Yeah. I really, really do um, because it, it's really part of my personality. Oh, just, yeah. So, my first degree, my first love is the ocean. Uh, I'm, I'm a marine biologist mm -hmm. by first degree. So I've tagged sharks in California. That's kind of that was the <laughs> my passion. I wanted to travel the world doing that. Um, so that makes sense to have a you know. A, a die Uhr steht dem ja. Also zum Beispiel die Ringe. Immer, da hat eben jemand geschrieben, dass es mir stehen würde. Immer, ist wahnsinnig oder was? Was? Wie soll ich das? Wie soll ich das anziehen? Die Ringe. Totenköpfe gehen bei mir sowieso nicht, aber... I have a watch, of course. Um, and the James Cameron pieces, my books are actually in development for TV and movies right now. So, you know, the whole connection. And, and James Cameron's movies, you think like, you know, um, The Abyss, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. really influenced my writing style and what I like to do. So, yeah, it's kind of a, it's a sentimental watch for me. Nice. It makes absolute sense. And yeah. it's nice to see it because, again, you don't see them in person anymore. No, not often, right? Beautiful, and they, they tie in beautifully with the watches as well, and also the books, obviously. So let's get into the first watch. Which one do you want to present us? Uh, why don't we start here, and we'll kind of work down the line. Perfect. Um, so this one, uh, I absolutely love this one. So this is my um, Armin Storm Peace Unique. Yeah. Armin Storm. Ich kenne keinen, der eine Armin Storm hat. Boah, guck dir mal diese Ringe an, wie die hier aussehen, ey. Da mit so, mit so Aquamarin oder so drin als Auge ist ja wirklich immer. Und guck mal hier abgestimmt da auf den Ring. Ah, ah so. So, uh, I worked with the guys at Amazon to have this one made for me. The dial has been uh, hand gear shaded by uh, Kai Butani. And I just get so much attention from people who know watches, right? Yeah, so, people course. who don't know watches, they're not necessarily as, as interested. But if you, if you see another watch guy, yeah. they're instantly like, ah, oh, like, well like, nice. You know, it's sort of like, <laughs> like bikers when you go past each other and you it's nod. It's a nice nod, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just a little, little wink. So, uh, I love this piece. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's a. It's a yeah, this was really unique. So I, I, I specified it had to be this yeah. this strap um, and it just kind of sparkles. I just love it. Very skin. It's perfect. Perfect. And ties in again with the ocean theme. Uh, so exactly. it makes absolute sense. Exactly. What's the next one? We, we showed this in the, on the channel before. So this one is actually uh, how you and I met. Actually, um, So this is the Aventi Sapphire. Um, and uh, I love Aventi war ich noch nie so in touch. Aventi machen günstige Uhren. Also im Verhältnis, ne? Tourbillon, Sapphire Case. Habe ich aber noch nie in der Hand gehabt. This watch is the Tourbillon. Um, and I love the idea of having a full Sapphire Case. Yeah. But as you know, the kind of like 50, 60, whatever plus Case. Of course, yeah, more, um, yeah. You know, and uh, this one. Ich meine, so gesehen ist jetzt nicht schlecht, ne? Ist halt so ein bisschen asymmetrisch, kann man sich drüber streiten. Die Idee von einem Sapphire Case ist halt cool. Ja, kann man, also ist, äh, ist ja, es hat was, also was was way below that and I managed yeah. to kind of get in quite early with the guys at Aventi mm -hmm. and, and, and part of their little watch group and we chat quite a lot um, and I love supporting smaller brands yeah. right I'm a disruptor myself you know I have my own um, business in in the movie industry and um, 
I like supporting these things. So for me, this just, again, made a lot of sense to, to support them and, and have a piece that not everybody's wearing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a common theme in your collection, I see. Yeah. Again, many brands which we never didn't see, and also in this micro brand uh, or startup sphere, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we met uh, with uh, Ryan, with I Ryan. think. Ryan, yes. yeah, exactly. So shout out to you, Ryan. <laughs> uh, cool, good guys. But the next brand is also... Hublot macht auch Sapphire Case. Weißt du, wer auch Sapphire Case? Nein, keine Sapphire Case. Aber sieht ähnlich aus. Einfach die hier. Einfach die Casio. <lacht> 79 Euro heute noch. 79 Euro, ey. Kannst du dir entscheiden. Entweder 10.000 Euro, 100.000 Euro, bei Richard Mill 3 Millionen Euro oder einfach 79 Euro bei der Casio. Something we featured on Channel before. I actually also own a Resec. So ja, wie der andere, das ist ohne Spaß. So weirdly, I was Google searching green watches. Okay. That's how I ended up. So I, I actually, Kronos is the only brand that I own two watches from. Yeah. Um, so I didn't bring the green one today. Um, but I saw their, their dial again, hang gear shade by Mike. Wisst ihr, was ich gerne hätte? Erstmal Kronos Swiss. Mm, ist cool, ist mega. Die Uhr sieht gut aus. Kronos Swiss trifft nicht so meinen Geschmack. Zu ihm passt es. Weißt, wisst ihr, was ich noch für eine Marke in meiner, äh, in meiner Sammlung haben möchte? Pass auf, jetzt halt euch mal fest. Soll ich sagen, was ich wirklich gerne hätte? Die kosten halt wieder so ein, so ein Geld, ne? In dem Blau. So, so hier, die hier. Halt so eine mit so Blau gebläut. Also nicht, ich möchte die eigentlich mit diesem Sternenhimmel haben. Es hat, ich hatte mal eine gesehen für unter 100. Ist ja mal wieder ein Scherz hier. So hier, weißt du? So was. Für mich persönlich jetzt, ne? wenn ihr mich fragen würdet, was würde ich kaufen? Ihr habt ja vielleicht das Video auch gesehen mit Marco von Swiss Watch Gang. Ich, hab, ich kaufe jetzt die Uhren nicht wegen Investment oder so. Aber ich habe meistens dann doch einen, einen guten Riecher für äh, auch kleiner. Die hier, die Uhr hätte ich gerne. Was heißt die? Guck mal, da fängst du echt an zu träumen. Das ist so aus dem, aus, von einem Meteoriten. Das Coole ist, ich würde die Uhr kaufen und dann nie anziehen. Alter, die hier zum Beispiel, Space Machine ist das, glaube ich, ne? Dreamwatch. Da ist, die ist auch aus einem Dings. Auch wild. Das trifft auch nicht so meine Skills. Es gab so eine mit so einem Nachthimmel drauf. Hier sowas zum Beispiel kann man sich auch noch drüber streiten. Ja, ist, ja, ja. Aber... Debetun wäre so eine, so eine Uhrenmarke, ich glaube, die hier war das. Kind of approached me and said, hey, I got this nice blue one as well. Um, <lacht> and he was right, and I like complications, so while it looks like this madness here, yeah. actually, I generally have one of each type of thing, you know, mm -hmm. a GMT or, or a Resec or something. I like to, yeah. you know, I don't like to repeat something. So this is beautiful, it's, it's three-dimensional, um, the electric blue is just fabulous and um, I mean, as you can imagine, I like to make things match yeah, my clothes. Yeah, yeah you're, a, you're a very discreet guy. <laughs> right. So, you know, um, so when I've got a very nice blue cap that I wear, and this is kind of the watch that I wear with it. So, Perfect, yeah. yeah but, Great um, watch for good value as well. So. Yeah, I mean, again, hand gear shade. And I, I've met the guys, and I like the fact that I've, you know, all yeah. three of these watches, I know the people yes. behind it. And that, that's... You know where the money goes, basically. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So this is a watch I also rarely see in the streets, basically never. Uh, Dietrich. Yeah. Dietrich, ja, die Marke kenne ich auch. Alter, das, was sind das hier für Uhren? Das ist ja verrückt. Das ist ja Wahnsinn. Was, was sind das hier für Marken? So, I kind of saw this one uh, online, I think. It was kind of bouncing around the internet on social media um, a while ago. And I, I didn't buy it when it came out, um, but it kind of niggled in the back of my brain. Mm. And it's super 3D. And for me personally, it, Witzig, it looks ne? like a cell. Right, yes. so I'm a biologist, and this looks like the inside of a cell, and it's kind of very organic, and I love it. When I bought the watch, and then I ordered some straps from the guys, um, the owner uh, wrote to me a personal letter with extra straps, and was like, hey, I know, you know, uh, you like this, Here, here's a couple of extra straps. Nice. You know, and that was just a nice touch, just, you yeah, know. Yeah, it is, it's very human, yeah. basically, at the end of the day. Yeah, And exactly. you have the special version with the rainbow bridge, which yes. is not common at all. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Something again we never see. <laughs> we have my souvenirs. I mean, that's a common theme in this video. I, I sound like a broken record, but it's really, you know, yeah. I hope the guys. Cuervo Sobrinos. You like the, seeing all this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a range that. for me. You know, I, I buy what I like. So yeah. maybe sometimes that's very expensive. Sometimes it's really not. It mm -hmm. really depends. So I was looking for a, uh, a pink 
salmon dial, mm -hmm. essentially, and I didn't like anything that much, um, really. And a lot of them were too small for me. Mm -hmm. So anything below 40 millimeters, yeah. it's not my thing. Yeah. This one, this thing is about 42, 43. And I just, I just loved it. I thought it looked uh, elegant. I love the fact that the crown is special. It kind of it fits flush. Oh to the watch. Um, the strap itself actually is uh, by Atelier Petrov mm -hmm. in Basel, maybe an ostrich strap. I'm not going to lie, it's the buckle that sold the it to me. Is nice, the so. buckle's gorgeous. <laughs> um, I just think it's so pretty. And it's got a, a quote from Winston Churchill on the back of the glass, which essentially says, attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. Nice. Right. That's smart. And I like that. That kind of kind of sums up my, my life. It's limited edition as well. What's the number? 20 out of 30? Uh, it's number 20 of 30, 20. yeah. Nice. Very yeah. cool. Again, I've hardly ever seen any of these watches here. That's how we also came in contact at the beginning. Broken record again. Never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> Super light. Huh? Yeah, so I was looking at um, carbon fiber watches and trying to you know, find what was out there. That's completely carbon fiber. Case, bracelet, everything. It weighs nothing. Hey, MOP Dial, I've never seen the Marke. Yeah. Um, by a company called uh, Helberg, it's the H2O by, by Helberg in Germany, I think. It's got a mother of pearl dial, mm -hmm. um, really, really pretty. And I just, yeah, it's, it's a super... Um, Dort das Logo habe ich schon mal gesehen. Guck mal, das ist auch die Sache, ne? wir alle fokussieren uns immer auf das Gleiche. Ich verstehe das auch, ne? wir alle wollen das Gleiche oder wertbeständige Produkte kaufen, aber so was ist auch auf eine Art und Weise cool. Ne? Ist natürlich ab, ab, no, ab fern der Norm. And the cool thing about their site is you get to build the watch. So I got to choose the kind of the case and the and the, the bezel and the dial and the hands and everything. Nice. So well designed. Yeah. Thanks. I like it a lot. <laughs> and what's the price point of something like this? Because people usually see expensive watches on my channel. Yeah. And this is full carbon, so we should assume it's expensive. But no, really not. That one was under 2K, I think. Yeah. Nice. So yeah. guys. If somebody wants a full carbon watch, I mean, this is a good option. Feels very well made. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it really does. Another nice piece, huh? again, limited edition. Also a theme of this collection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I do like to go limited. If das Zifferblatt sieht so spektakulär aus. Mosa ist unverkennbar. If I can, yeah. again, I don't like to wear generally what everyone else has. So that's uh, Mosa Krasny. It's the one that was done for their anniversary mm -hmm. for being allowed to to basically operate again back in Russia because yeah. they were you know kicked out after the after the war in Russia a long time ago. Mm -hmm. 2017, they released this watch. 17 pieces in the world. Yeah. Um, so super limited. Amazing. Ich hatte ja nun mal diese Apple Watch von Mosa. Lass mal gucken, was die noch so haben. Mosa. Guck mal, was haben die denn so? Was gibt's da? Mosa hat auch so. Die günstigen Mosa-Uhren, die können gar nichts. <lacht> Wie viele Uhren sind das? 200. Ey, warum sind es so teuer? Äh, warum so viele? Da ist ziemlich viel Schrott dabei. So. Äh, nein, 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 nein. Guck mal, guck mal jetzt hier. Die ist schön, aber ist auch nicht so pur. Das ist. Die anderen, zum Beispiel, die ist schön. Die ist schön, finde ich schön. Aber USA und 16.000 Euro. Die ist schön. Finde ich toll. Tolle Uhr. Gefällt mir sehr gut. Ah, sogar Automatik. So. <lacht> ist so unnütz. Einfach, einfach ich werde die Uhr kaufen, einmal tragen und dann werde ich sie auch wieder weglegen. Oh, schön. Guck mal hier, ist das diese Venture, diese mit dem Schwarz? Tolle Uhr, tolle Uhr. Gucken wir mal, was wir noch haben. Machen wir mal Standort Europa, damit wir auch was kaufen können, ne? Würde ich mal sagen, Leute. So, was haben wir denn in Europa von Moser zu kaufen? Swiss Alp Watch, die hatte ich auch mal. Die war aber auch nix. Guck mal, das ist ja super. Das ist ja ganz toll. Gibt nämlich gar nichts für unter 20.000 Euro. Kann man direkt, ne? zack, zack, zack. Ja, und da sind wir auch schon wieder deutlich drüber. Da wäre fast, da wäre es ja fast sinnvoll, die hier zu kaufen. Ne? So, wenn ich jetzt die kaufe, wer hat die denn überhaupt? Kenne ich den? Ach, Watchbox hat den. Ah, okay, cool. Watchbox hat den. Ah, <lacht> ist nicht schlecht die Uhr, ne? Das kann man eigentlich machen. Ich 
kenne da jemanden bei Watchbox. Naja. And uh, uh, Atelier Petrov, he did the, the special strap for yeah. me with this relic on the, on the strap. With the Rassia and the, the Yera. Yeah. Very cool. I've seen this on Instagram like a few days ago. Yeah. But again, it's in person a good luck. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you won't, you won't <laughs> see that one. Again, a micro brand which we never saw on the channel. Uh, we like Urwerk here, so this is kind of in that direction. Yeah. How did you come across this? So I was looking for wandering hour watches. Yeah. Um, so I kind of yeah. just do, start doing Google searches. So green watches, wandering hour watches. <laughs> right, exactly. Krass, das ist ja einfach Uhrwerk. Die ist ja genau wie Uhrwerk. No, Google's a great place. And uh, so I started looking for that and I came across these guys and they were producing something that was, uh, I guess, Uhrwerk on a budget. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's a meal to movement. It's nothing like super special, but it, it works really well. It's a very simple mechanism to make it work, but it's it's cool. It's got a biker feel. It's, so it's a good story. size as well. Huh? Yeah, right. It's not Guck mal, bei Uhrwerk, ihr denkt, das ist eine aufregende Uhr. Die Uhr ist einfach brutal langweilig. Also Uhrwerk als solches ist natürlich mega und cool und so, aber da passiert auf dem Ziffernblatt nicht so viel. Man hat ja irgendwie so das Gefühl, das Ding wird jetzt da drin so sich bewegen und links, rechts und so, ne? Aber da dreht sich gar nichts. Also weil halt, das dauert eine Stunde, bis da was passiert, ne? Not bad. You show me this watch when they launch. Aber yeah. cool. And I wasn't sure about uh, it Uhrwerk. because also, I thought it's going to be big. Super, aber yeah. But in person it, it, so it really isn't. Das nicht. It's nice. And again, the price point was really affordable, I think. No? At the time, so I got it when they were just launching a Kickstarter. It was about maybe 500 or so. I yeah. think now they're more around the thousand mark. Yeah. Um, but for a wandering hour watch, and it's really well made, it's, nothing, it's, uh, it's really not much. It's very affordable, to be honest. With a nice Code de Geneva on the bottom of the dial, I mean, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and it suits you so to see like these watches. It's always nice to meet somebody who, like you, who surprises even me with something new. You know, it's hard to do because we featured so many brands already from all around the world. Uh, this is a brand I personally uh, saw maybe eight years wow. ago in the uh, German Arband Uhren magazine. But again, in person, Schau yeah, never. Watch. What's the story behind this video? <laughs> so, I'm not, it's, so, broken record, rewind. I yes. Google searched. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, red moon watch? Or? So, moon, uh, so moon phase, right? So okay. I like, so again, it's, it's my kind of thing is different types of you know, complication and I wanted a moon phase. But honestly, for me, a lot of moon phases were a little boring, yeah. right? They were all, they were in a watch that was very, classical, yeah. very classical, which is not generally my style. Mm -hmm. um, I do wear suits for work. Um, but as a general rule, you know, it wasn't my thing. So I came across these guys and that's a blood moon. So you can't tell now because we're almost at the new moon phase, yeah. but um, it's got a blood red moon there and it's huge. It's really yeah, nice, it is, it's very it large. Have the dial out. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, I love the, the textured back to the dial. Mm -hmm. um, it just worked, it was really nice. Yes, um, it is. It so is. I got to have my convocation and With kind of ring to rock and roll, the you know? Do you ever include watches in your books? Does a character like wear a watch? Or? So yes, but I don't usually do it by brand because you can get sued. Yeah, uh, you have to be very careful. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like, I can see one of these like in the books or maybe the auto like, yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So on the other side of the table, you also have two more watches. Yeah. So what did you search for there? So th <laughs> this one was because I was looking at Google for Sea and, okay. I, and I love Yes. those watches but clearly you know I'm not, yeah i'm not a gazillionaire yeah so i was looking for uh gröbel forsey is auch muss man sagen wer eine gröbel forsey trägt der ist einfach der ist einfach oben angekommen also vom konsumverhalten her gröbel forsey kaufst du dir nur wenn du also da musst du schon ein uhren fan sein und verdammt rich sein das ist auch noch mal anders als bei richard mill weil richard mill kauft ja auch jemand der auch vielleicht jetzt nicht so krass im uhren thema drin ist aber trotzdem halt einfach mäßig so halt zeigen will was er hat aber gröbel forsey da ist der ofen aus gröbel forsey ist schon da geht die post schon richtig ab um, a globe like a 3d rotating globe mm -hmm. and that's where this one came in um, and i absolutely love yes. it I uh, did a lot of research when I was Googling this one, and the, the attention to detail for the wow. price is insane. Wow! Yeah. Um, it almost makes no sense. No, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's got great beveling. It's cool. got, you know, the 3D titanium rotating globe. There's a, a white gold pointer um, mm -hmm. to the globe, so when the globe rotates, you can always see where it's noon. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a gold cup for the, for the date, Arabic dial. Um, can, on the back, it's, it's very pretty. On the inside of the of the globe, he's painted the stars on the on the back of the scene. It's it's just under 5K. This yeah. watch was. Yeah. Um, 
just fa fabulous. I think it's yes, I agree. For the money, insane. I mean, it's it's cool to see all these watches also because you see what's not hyped up yet, right? Yeah. You can still pick this up at 4.55k. Mm -hmm. The Schaumburg, I, I assume as well. Atovag, these carbon guys. Yeah. I mean. Not all hope is lost, guys, if you still want to buy Spans. a cool watch. So this one, the only thing on this one is I think it was 100 pieces total yeah. made for this. Yeah. And uh, so many for the Arabic, so many for the, you know, Roman sure. numerals, etc. But uh, Beautiful. And a cool guy as well. I met him in... Vicentera. Well, the last acquisition, I think. So no? this is a watch I never thought I would buy. So it's not really in keeping with the not no. everyone else has it thing. <laughs> um, I just submitted my, my latest book to my editor. Yeah. Uh, it's my first book all set in space um, and so I kind of wanted a spacey themed watch and I kind of walked into the store and thought oh maybe I will maybe yeah. I won't I didn't really like speed Let's masses see, before yeah. put it on my wrist and you have that moment where you're like oh no okay, damn it <laughs> yeah my credit card's gonna hate me um so it's got yes. a super vintage yes. mega tapered it's like 20 mils down to I don't know 14 or something mm -hmm. it's crazy yep. it's got the the brand new uh, movement inside a 3861 or something or something Thing. The only thing that makes it different to most people is I didn't go Hesalite. Mm -hmm. I went the double sapphire sandwich. Yeah, I will do the same. Uh, I got two small kids and Hesalite, yes. but not, not a thing. Plus with the Hesalite, I think like uh, I have a watch with that and then when you scratch it, you always see the scratch. Yeah. It bothers me so, so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just stopped wearing the watch because yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, I've had, I've had a bit of bad luck with, with, Thank with you watches for that watch. early in my watch collecting life. Yeah. Um, so my my first one that I really had spent any money on, I was about 21, my 21st birthday, and I bought myself a Hugo Boss, which back then nice. was, a, was a huge, de a huge fancy. deal. Fancy. <laughs> yeah, fancy. <laughs> and it had like a, a blue domed sapphire crystal. And I also bought myself a motorbike yeah. and then crashed it about two months later, very badly, I had this huge accident. And I remember flying through the air after the car hit me and I'm kind of <sighs> tumbling through the air. Damn. And I remember thinking, oh Damn. no, there goes my watch. And I remember it hitting, hitting the pavement and just shattering yeah. and that's all I cared about yes, right my watch. spine's broken you know I'm laid out on the floor and all I can think of is my watch so yeah many can relate probably yeah yeah exactly uh, do you do you believe in a concept of grail watches or you just buy what you like and see no I, I mean I, I, everybody has grails yeah. I mean uh, but again it's the weird stuff so a Google 4C I would love yeah. uh, the new Balancier the one with the with the angled tourbillon yes. is, is amazing, amazing. amazing. Um, you know a Gautier um you know, something like that. It's just, you know, not not super crazy, but uh, no, it's reachable. It's reachable. It, it's re yeah. reachable in a lifetime for sure. Yeah, and you're not the guy who sells watches as well, right? No, so no. I more don't or less, you have to make more to buy more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, guys, if you like science fiction and you want to help a fellow watch guy out. I'm going to link all these books down in the description, of course. Yeah, I must say, it was definitely interesting. We have a lot of new inspiration and eventually a new collaboration. And that is always a good thing.